Hello, my name is Julian. I live in uh, England, UK. Now, um, I recently found out about a new phenomenon called uh, v vblogging or something. V blog no. V blogging, which is I guess video blogging. Uh, the reason I found out about this was because I had a meeting with my local vicar. I'm not religious, but uh, he's, a, he's a good bloke and he, he's helped me through some tough times. And God knows I've ever have been in tough times. Yeah. Uh, because, uh, you know, uh, as a disabled chap, anyway, in a wheelchair, which I am, got cerebral palsy, po po it um, can be difficult. Also, suffering from social anxiety can be hard. So, I'm using this, uh, uh, video blog, if you like, uh, to try to reach out to other people who may be in a similar situation to myself. Basically, my situation is this. Um, I am age 42, therefore I am technically uh, middle-aged. If you um, if you uh, take 42 times it by 2, obviously you get 84, which is quite a good age to die. Therefore, I guess by definition, I'm, uh, I'm middle-aged. I've also got the grey hair to prove it. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, so... Uh, when I was very young, I, I was sent to the boarding school for specially designed for disabled children. The idea was to help. The idea was to help people, uh, us kids with disabilities to deal deal with life and stuff. Uh, unfortunately, I was very sensitive. And uh, although initially I was quite outgoing and stuff, and you know, just like a normal kid, I guess. I think after a period of time, not very long actually, probably a year or two, I became very withdrawn and I, I became very shy. A shyness, obviously most people are familiar with shyness. Uh, most people have it to some degree, but in my case it was quite crippling. Uh, especially as I grew, grew into my adolescent uh, life and my, my adulthood. So, I mean, made it very difficult made it very difficult for me to make friends and most painfully it made it very difficult for me to find um, relationships with, with, with ladies ladies yeah you know, I can never work out I still can't work out whether it's my disability or my shyness that has prevented me from, um, from being able to form relationships. I guess it's a combination of the both of them. But, you know, um, I, I think women are very in intuitive. They're probably, in some ways, more intelligent than men. 
So it's hard to understand why um, why I have not been successful with them. Because, you know, they, they should, uh, you know, know, knowing how intelligent they are, know how intuitive they are, and how nurturing they are, uh, one would think that they would see through a disability. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm an intelligent bloke. I've been to university. I've done a postgraduate diploma. Um, but yeah, still, I'm, I haven't had much luck with the ladies. Indeed, yeah. So um, this is a mystery to me. Uh, according to Freud, it is like an unsolvable mystery. I think Freud spent his whole, his entire, um, his, his entire career trying to work out women and he never succeeded. If Freud can't do it, maybe I can't, but there's lots of men out there who manage to get women. I'm not, I'm not after like loads of women, it's for like, just like to find the right one. Another problem that I've been suffering from is the stammer. The stammer is probably, in my case, a nervous reaction to meeting people or interacting with people. There are various theory, theories about stammering. A good friend of mine, a Reverend Vicar, whom I met actually, uh, might actually um, had a meeting with today. He used to suffer from a stammer, and the purpose of meeting with him today was I wanted to get his advice on how he get, overcame it. He get, Basically, his advice amounted to that he just got more confidence and he realised realised it really wasn't that much of a problem. And other, other people did not really um, did not really worry about it as much as he did. Unfortunately, I'm not quite at that stage yet, and I, I do feel self-conscious. I, I do feel like it's a problem. I, I do feel embarrassed by it. You'll notice I'm not stammering right now, um, because partly because I don't have anyone sitting there in front of me and you know judging me. All I got is a camera. That's different. I can kind of, I can talk to, to technology to some extent. Which I guess is partly why I communicate extremely well via email and by writing. In fact, I'm a published author of a book. Um, yeah, anyway, I am extremely shy. Um, I am an author. Okay, and to get back on track, um, social anxiety is a very much um, misunderstood. Uh, problem. Partly I think this is because people kind of identify with it to some degree. The problem is that most people have a, a quite a low level of social anxiety and therefore they assume that other people have 
a low level of social anxiety and they kind of think I think they think that you know if, if I can deal with this it's hurting you you know that's, I think that's the attitude sometimes hmm. it's a little bit like uh, recently I've been on a diet um, I I mean going to the gym quite a lot and trying to lose some weight and I I've been well, trying to, you know trying to cut down on my intake of calories and stuff and yeah you know, uh, if, if I spoke to a, a if I spoke to a morbidly obese person or super morbidly obese person, what, what, what would they say to me? Um, I would tell them, well, you know, um, I managed to cut down, it's, it's, it's relatively easy, you just need to eat less. Right? And there's this person basically on their deathbed. Um, they're bedridden, but they still can't stop eating too much. Yeah. It's a little bit like that, you know. Um, we can all identify with the, uh, with the problems of, um, you know, with the temptation to eat too much sometimes, or to drink too much. Um, but most of us don't have it to that degree and that is similar to social anxiety in my, in my opinion. Everyone, everyone can identify being shy in some situations but uh, when it becomes social anxiety in a way it's like that, it's like that. Um, super morbidly obese person who's become so um, addicted to food or or has, has given up so much that, that it's become a real killer really. I wouldn't classify um, social anxiety as an addiction it's, for me, it's a anxiety. It's, uh, but boils down to a form of protection. We all want to be accepted. We don't want to be judged. And for me, being social anxiety, uh, uh, having social anxiety, um, I constantly feel um, judged in my social social um, interactions. It doesn't help when you got a physical disability either, because uh, people will judge that as well. And um, they say a smile can be can be a smile can be detected a hundred meters away, but I reckon a disability or a special wheelchair could probably be detected twice that twice that distance. Now, overtly, most people accept disability disability in this country, in England, UK, but we all have dark crevices in our minds where we, you know, we make judgments, we, we say things to ourselves that we would not like to um, admit, uh, we, would like, we would not like to um, to, to express because it will not be acceptable and the problem is that 
people, people might not express these things, but still they affect their behavior. And so, obviously people are very, um, can be very empathetic, can be very intuitive. And so, I personally will pick up on these, these negative feelings sometimes, especially being quite a sensitive person, which leads uh, to me in reinforcing my own kind of, uh, my own, um, my own cycle of, of, um, self-loathing, I guess, sometimes. A low self-esteem is low self-worth. But it all revolves around, most of it revolves around my self-image as a disabled person and my sense of worth as a disabled person. It's not real, it's just all inside my head. Okay, that's something we all need to understand, I, I can never quite understand it. It's all perception. There are lots of disabled people who are very self-confident, who are uh, very successful, and they make relationships probably better than a lot of uh, able-bodied people. And by the same token, there are lots of able-bodied people who are very bad at making relationships, who are very low self-esteem. So, these me to think, basically, um, A disability is just another peg to hang your low self-esteem on. In my case, it's a big, it's, big, it's a very convenient pe peg. Uh, but I don't know what to do about it, really. I've seen lots of counsellors. I've, I've seen, you know, uh, I have done lots of self-help things, been on courses, read loads of books, uh, it myself. Nothing yet has really worked that well. It's a um, one one other problem is that um, uh, if if people if someone has a uh, prejudice. There is normally a small, very small grain of. There's my hand, there's my hand. Yes. There is normally a very small grain of truth in it. So when it comes to disability, of course, if someone has a prejudice about it, there's always a very small, small grain of truth there. Of course, uh, you know, because, uh, uh, well, I guess if you look at it in evolutionary, evolutionary terms, a disabled man, um, hundreds of years, or thousands of years ago, would not have survived, um, and would not have been able to reproduce at all. And that is, I guess, that's still built into our DNA, still built into our instincts. Um, it's very hard to get away from that. So prejudices, I think, are built on um, mostly ignorance, but there is that grain of truth. There is, there is a tiny grain of truth. And unfortunately, um, when you are growing up uh, and quite sensitive and you are in a world 
where so much people not the same as you. Um, you can get hooked on to that grain, grain of truth. A tiny little grain of truth, it can grow, it can become uh, overwhelming, it can, it can become big, yeah, it can become um, the whole of your self-image. And that's kind of how it's been become to me. However, uh, recently I've been getting a bit better, a bit better. I've been um, seeing a life coach. Um, uh, I've been drinking less, which that's another, that's another thing, of course. Uh, drinking, unfortunately, runs in my family. My father died of alcohol. Alcohol related liver disease 10, about 11 years ago. And that, that has continued to be a problem. Well, alcohol continued to be, be a problem for me. But, um, so far, I haven't had sustained a significant liver damage, but it certainly has caused me lots of problems in the past. But it all comes down to um, a difficulty in accepting the, the way that I am and accepting my self-worth. So, uh, anyway, um, I have been improving to some extent. Uh, I have been... Um, using NLP and uh, utilizing the wisdom and experience of my life coach. Also engaging with my local figure, as I mentioned at the beginning of this broadcast. So I just thought if anyone else is going through this same kind of shit as I am, I just want to give you this message. There is hope. You're not alone. You are not worthless. You you are beautiful. We, we are, we, we all made the same, really. Deep down, if you get, in the, if you get inside, don't forget, we're all going to die. We're all going to become um, a bag of bones. Uh, uh, no matter what, we, no matter what we look like through our life, um, we're all going to end up the same way in the end. So we need to just make the, make the most of our lives as uh, cliche, you know. Um, doesn't matter what, 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 what we look like. We all we all have different roles in life. I think we're not all going to be um, superstars. We're not, we're not all going to have families, and uh, we're not all going to be uh, big big money makers or. Or whatever you know, whatever you want to say is successful. It doesn't matter. I mean, we're all here. We're all gonna make a contribution, even if it's just by allowing someone else to help us. That that will help them in return. Because don't forget, when you help someone else out um, it, it does help you it makes you feel good so you might you might feel like a need, needy person sometimes sometimes you need to be a needy person sometimes you, you sometimes that is how you need to be don't forget though that that does help other people too and sometimes you 
Yeah, you have to work through that and you have to you have to climb your way out of that and then when you do discover um a a um a less needy way of being uh, then in some ways you kind of you kind of give give back just to people what 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 you received but also you know you don't forget you've already given them something you've already you've already helped them by allowing them to help you so don't ever be afraid of be needy if you need to be needy. Okay. Uh, the attention seeking is a different thing. So I would recommend against that, but um, maybe sometimes you need to do that too because sometimes you're just not getting enough attention and uh, get enough attention. Um, I sometimes I feel, I feel that way. Yeah, I do. I do. It's very frustrating when you're very shy and you're not getting enough attention from society or you're getting the wrong kind of attention. When your family is criticising you and society seems to be ignoring you, um, it's hard. So I can understand you, you might want to feel needy you might want to you might you might want to be in there, uh, seeking attention at those times. It's all good intentions, you see. That is one of the things about NLP. Um, it recognizes that all human, uh, uh, all all human behaviors have a positive intention behind them. Sometimes they're hard to accept because some people do some crazy things. Some people do things that people might say are evil. But I guess that's that. Uh, the NLP thing is in line with the Christian thing. Not that I'm religious, but I just I, I did meet my vicar today, so just thinking about that. Um, and he uh, he said to me today. There's good and evil in everybody, of course, as John Lennon said. Um, yeah, people do things for reasons. So, I guess um, when, it becomes, when it comes to people, when it comes to people reacting to. A person with disability, there's a range of emotions, I guess, or a range of possible reactions. They might be a bit scared uh, because they don't, they don't know, they yeah. really don't understand uh, your disability, they don't understand your um, uh, the extent, or, or the, even the nature of your disability. Uh, they might be embarrassed. They might be embarrassed because they have some kind of prejudice, maybe, in some cases. Uh, they might be, um, uh, they might be covering up something. Um, Maybe maybe they've been worried about their own health. Maybe they're in the early stages of Parkinson's or something, and they're angry and they want to take it out on somebody. That can happen too, you know. There's loads of different reasons for these things. I think and people are so complicated. You you, should, you must not try to mind read people and internalize what, what, what goes in, what goes on in their head. I do that a lot, probably feeding into my own um, problems, anyway, so 
I, I'm hopefully going to make these broadcasts quite regular. Um, this is therapy for me. Hopefully, it's useful for some people. So, I'm suffering from depression, suffering from anxiety, suffering from alcohol problems, suffering from social anxiety. Suffering, well, not so much suffering, but I do have a physical disability, cerebral palsy. But I'm fighting all these things, apart from the CP, which I can't fight really, because it's constant. So, if anybody would like to get back to me, uh, if any ever rings a bell with anybody here, then you're very welcome to do so. And yeah. also, I'd like to show you my new hoodie. I don't normally wear hoodies, but there you go. This one's quite empowering, you see. It harks back to the old um, He-Man thing, which I used to love to watch as a kid. I might, I might have got the size too big, I don't know. Right. Might be putting the wrong side because it's back to front. Uh, anyway, it basically says, I have the power. Man, that's it. Basically says, I, I have the power, as in he men, I have the power, so, don't forget you have the power, you absolutely do, never forget that, and I could recommend some books in the next broadcast, um, so, until, until then, really take care of yourself, um, remember, you're worth it. Oh, I sound like a bloody advert for Nivea, but it's true. You're worth it, you're worth it. Okay. Cheers, catch you later.